Hello everyone, this import video will be dealing with your C9 paper that is Riemann integration and series of functions. You can consider it as a second part of your real analysis. Why? Because we will be dealing with the real intervals and real numbers. So basically the integration part will be on the real intervals. Okay. So in this uh, whole videos, we will cover up the Riemann integration and its properties series of functions it will be a series of uh, real functions and the power series the power series will also be a series of real uh, the functions of real numbers okay the real valued functions so basically we will be dealing with in a nutshell we will be dealing with these three uh, topics okay so first of all we will give some definitions or you can say some notations so we assume that this is my assumption that f is bounded on a closed interval a b a b can be any closed interval and f is bounded on this a b okay and s s is a subset of a b this is my these are my two basic assumptions okay now i define my first definition is capital m f s okay so my m will be a function of f and s okay so this what is this this is a supremum of fx over s okay this is my capital m f s and what will be what will be my small f small m f s it will be infimum okay infimum of fx over the same interval s okay now the third definition will be the partition partition of a b okay the so partition of a b it can be done in many ways okay uh, the basic way uh, which every book follows is p equal to a equal to t naught t1 t2 and tn this is the basic notations and tn is equal to b where t naught is less than strictly less than t1 and it is strictly less than t2 and so on and tn minus 1 is strictly less than tn which is equal to b and t naught was equal to a okay so basically what is this we have divided the part uh, the interval the closed interval a b into n equal sub intervals okay for example this is my interval a b okay so we have divided into n equal parts right so this is my t naught which is equal to a this is my t n which is equal to b and these are my t 1 t 2 and so on okay I give you an example on this uh, let my a b be a closed interval from 0 to 10 okay so I define my partition to be t naught to be 0 t 1 to be 0 0.5 okay t 2 to be 1.0 t3 to be 1.5 and so on so my 10 will be t20 right so therefore my n in the definition of partition is 20 my a is 0 and my b is 10 okay so what we have done we have divided this closed interval 0 to 10 in 20 equal sub intervals okay so i call this set p so my p is basically what 0 0 0.5 1 1.5 and so on right till 10 okay then this p is called partition of 0 comma 10 okay now having understood the concept of partition and the notation capital M and small m, I want to define the upper Darboxum. 
okay so what is upper the box sum it is denoted by u capital u f comma p where p will be the partition of ab okay so throughout this uh, definition we will use the same no uh, same notations for the basic interval which was ab and p for the partition of ab okay so what is the upper the upper the box sum it is denoted by u f comma p and it is defined as summation of m f t k minus one comma t k okay this multiplied by t k minus t k minus one okay and this for uh, my k will run from one till n okay similarly my lower order box sum. How will it be defined? It is defined in a similar fashion. Lf comma p, where p is the partition of AB. Okay, this is the summation from uh, summation k from one to n. Small m, f comma t k minus one comma t k into t k minus t k minus one. Okay. Now I want to. Show you what it uh, what it basically means geometrically. How have you defined this uh, upper the box sum and lower the box sum in the next slide? So how I defined my U F P. It was equal to the summation of capital M F comma T K minus one till T K into T K minus T K minus one. Okay, and the summation was running from k equal to one till n, right? And a similar way I have defined LFP, which was equal to summation k running from one till n, and this time small m of capital a of F T k minus one T k into T k minus T k minus one, right? So what it geometrically means, I show you. Suppose this is my graph of the function f. This is my f x axis, and this is my x axis, and the suppose and suppose my function is like this. Okay, this is my f x. Suppose this is my a, and this is my b. Okay, and I define my partition to be like this. I partition my closed interval A B in this way. Okay, so this is this is my T naught, this is my T one, T two, T three, T four, T five, and this is my T six. So what I've done, I've divided my A B into six equal, uh, not equal intervals, six intervals, okay, and I have given the name to the e to each point as T I S, okay. So you can see that T K is strictly greater than T K minus one, which was the assumption in the definition of the partition, okay. So what does this term mean, right? So how I define my capital M? F comma S, right? So S was a subset of cap of uh, the closed interval A B, right? So this is a subset of A B, right? Because it's a closed interval, and any T K minus one T K will be a uh, subset of A B, right? So therefore, how I defined my M F comma S, it was defined as supremum of F X over this interval, right? So I, if I consider my interval to be T naught till T one. That is this interval, okay. So what will be my supremum of f x in this interval? It will be this, right? So let uh, let let it be m one, okay. Let's call it m one. Similarly, in this interval t one till t two, what will the supremum of f x? It will be like this. It will be here. Let's call it m two. Similarly, here it will be this m three. In this, it will be m four. It will it will be this. 
in this interval it will be m5 it will be this and this interval it will be here m6 right now what does this mean it is the exactly opposite thing it is the infimum of fx over the over that uh, very interval okay so in this interval t0 till t1 this will be my small m1 okay this is my m1 here it will be this basically my capital m1 and small m2 will coincide in here okay this is my m2 here it will be this m3 right here it will be this m4 here my m5 and capital m4 will coincide and here it will be m6 this okay and what is this thing this is just the length of the interval which we are considering okay so my ufp will become first of all you uh, you plug in the value of k equal to 1 in this so what will you get it you will get capital m of f comma t not till t1 into t1 minus t not right so therefore it will be capital m1 into t1 minus t not okay plus m2 t2 minus t1 plus so on till m6 t6 minus t5 right so what i have done i have multiplied this m1 into the length of this interval plus m2 into length of this interval this interval okay similarly m3 m4 and 5 into length of the subsequent intervals right so i have got this ufp similarly my lfp will be small m1 into t1 minus t0 plus small m2 into t2 minus t2 t1 t2 minus t1 plus so on till m6 t6 minus t5 so uh, what i'm doing here i'm just multiplying this small m1 into this length of this interval plus small m2 into length of this interval plus small m3 into length of this interval and so on right now i have got ufp and lfp right so i have done nothing i have just calculated the supremum of fx over the corresponding intervals and i multiplied each term by the length of the uh, the very the very interval which you have considered okay now we will define two new terms first is capital u of f okay so this is equal to infimum of all the ufps okay so what should vary in this the partition right so p is the partition of ab okay so you you will be you will be varying the partitions of ab and you calculate the infimum of all the ufps okay in a similar way you define lf which is equal to supremum of lfp is where p is the partition of ab okay so basically what is uf it is just infimum of all the ufp and lf is the supremum of all f all lfps okay so first thing you will notice that this uf and this lf it does not depend on the partition right why because we are just varying the partitions and we are calculating the infimums and the supremums okay so basically the uf and lf are independent of all the other things except this function f right so here comes the main definition we say that a function f is integrable okay over ab and we denote its integration from uh, by this notation integration from a to b f okay this is an integration sign so this is equal to lf it is equal to uf as well okay so what will you conclude from this 
we conclude that a function f is integrable over a b if and only if lf is equal to uf okay so basically when this infimum and this supremum will coincide right then we say that the function f is integrable okay and we call this as darbock integrable integration sorry darbock integral okay almost in a similar way we define riemann integral so first of all we define what is meant by riemann sum so the assumption is f is bounded on ab on the closed interval ab and p we we a partition of ab and p is defined like this okay t1 t0 t0 t1 till tn okay then the riemann sum of f associated with partition p is the sum of this form okay summation k running from 1 to n fxk into tk minus tk minus 1 okay where tk belongs to this interval and this choice is quite arbitrary that means xk can take any value in between tk minus 1 and tk including these two points okay so now we are ready to define what is meant by riemann integrability okay the, now the function f is riemann integrable okay on ab if there exists a number r is the following property and the property is for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that this prop this inequality holds that is mod of s minus r is less than epsilon for every riemann sum s of f associated with the partition p okay having mesh p less than delta now what is meant by mesh of p mesh of p is equal to maximum of tk minus tk minus 1 okay and the maximum is over k so basically what it is it is the maximum of the difference between subsequent points of p okay we have defined p in this way right t not t1 till tn so we uh we calculate the maximum of t not minus t uh, t1 minus t not sorry t1 minus t not t2 minus t1 dot 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 tn minus tn minus 1 okay so when uh, this is calculated then this is equal to actually mesh of p okay so again what is the definition of riemann integrability a function f is riemann integrable on ab if there exist a number r with such uh, such uh, there exists a number r such that for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that mod of s minus r is less than epsilon for every riemann sum s of f associated with the partition p having mesh of p less than delta okay now this number r this number r is called the riemann integrable riemann integral of f on ab okay and we write as r integration f of integration of f from a to b okay this we write as r okay 